one that has it. I'm giving you a heads up on it. If you download the Tongue Doc Bible app, you get in that fast lane, you get in that free check lane. Ron Garden Tongue Doc uh, Bible, I know you're going to love it. And uh, help me welcome Dr. Silson Cups. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Uh, it's great to be here with you all. Uh, we are here on a mission, a practice mission, we just came to us. When we are finished here, every nation will know Jesus and they have a Bible in their language. Jesus is coming and we need to be ready. We need to prepare for a third millennium. I'm writing a new book called A Kingdom of Christ, A Kingdom of God. I hope to dedicate this to my friend, Dr. Benashit. It is about the promise of Jesus. When Jesus cried, it is finished on the cross, the curtain of the Jerusalem temple lifted in two, and his body became the new country. The kingdom of God was completed through Jesus' cross. The kingdom of God is a promise and belief about five things. First, I believe in resurrection and the hope of eternal life. Second, I believe that the Holy Spirit will be with us while we fulfill the great mission. Third, I believe that your body is the temple of Christ and the blessing of the church. Fourth, I believe in Jesus' promise of his second coming. Mm -hmm. And fifth, I believe that the first heaven and earth will disappear mm -hmm. and have hope in the new heavens and the new earth. Mm -hmm. Believing this, is the new covenant that Jesus gave to us. It's, it's about the mission. Keep the main thing, the main thing. That's how we have, have unity, because we may disagree on, on some other things. We'll end up with the right people to keep the main thing central. Christ at the center. Scripture is the foundation, loving the church. And an example was given from the Korean church, from young to old, mm -hmm. everybody on the foundation of Scripture. They read through the Bible, they read through the Bible 10 times a year. And they can give children the larger story of Scripture. They can fill in the details when they grow up. But Scripture is wow. foundational. I have two Presbyterians in my life that have influenced me the most. One is my brother, John David Sweet, who, who uh, got his uh, divinity degree from Princeton. He went into Methodist and came out of Presbyterian. Uh, I say Princeton and Wooling, but that's not <laughs> And when I got, got his PhD in, uh, from the University of Berlin. But the other Presbyterian that has influenced me the most is Dr. Zoe. And uh, I am a whole different person today because of his impact uh, on my life. And what, what Dr. Davis said about some of the greatest scholars in the world, we don't know about them because they're around the world. And we think we're the best here, and we are. And we don't have the best technology. We don't have, whenever I go to Korea, I realize how far behind we are in technology. How far beyond we are in, in being this cutting edge of uh, people that we think we are. And his understanding of Tom Doc. And this is a, I have a whole chapter devoted on him to the earlier volume, Jesus Human, and to the concept of Tom Doc. But because of Tom Doc, I no longer purposely, it's hard for me to do this, but I no longer fight the first Bible as a text. Because it leads you in all the wrong directions. Um, the Bible was not intended to be read. The scriptures initially were 
confirm. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing from the word of God. And one of the things that we've done, and one of the worst things that contemporary modern biblical scholarship has done, is to reduce the Bible to a text where the eyes are dominant. And the first time in history we have any evidence of somebody reading the Bible silently by themselves is Augustine in the fourth century, who couldn't believe Ambrose was there in a corner. He'd never seen this before. There's somebody reading the Bible silently to themselves outside of community. And Augustine commented on how strange this was. He'd never seen this before. The, the story is meant to be received in community and it's meant to be the primary gateway to the soul is through the ears. It's like you have some really strange pictures in, in uh, medieval culture, the Immaculate Conception, where Mary is being conceived by the Holy Spirit and it comes through her ear. There's this divine ray coming from heaven piercing her ear. The ears are the primary gateway to the soul. And we have got to, um, instead of the old method of evangelism, show and tell, it's time to shut up and listen and hear what God is already doing. The notion that you and I take Jesus to some place where he's not. I mean, why do we believe in the presence of evil more than we believe in the presence of God? So he's already there. We, I, we need to hear him into speech. And that's, the, that's what the primary, and the way in which um, Dr. Zo has done this with his church, with his community, uh, with his people, uh, they read the Bible to, out loud. They receive it out loud. His children will talk about what it's like to wake up in the morning and hear their father reading the Bible out loud. That's right. And when you read it out loud, we are vibrational beings, and the sounds of those words actually change molecularly our body and our spirit. That's exactly right. And so this is all. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to keep going on. I could keep going on. This is what this this biblical scholar here has done for me, and as I sat at his feet for for 20 years now. Right. And learn, learn from him. And uh, so I dedicate this to you and uh, see if I can read what I wrote here myself. <laughs> um, dedicated to my friend and colleague, Dr. Zo, to my friend and colleague, a brilliant biblical scholar whose talk about the method of reading the scriptures is revolutionary. <laughs> Actually, it's a return to the origins, right. which is the real meaning of originality. It's a return to origins. That's something new. It's going back to reconceptualize the original. Your tireless pursuit of truth and your unwavering commitment to Christ inspire me daily. May your profound insights continue to enrich our understanding of the greatest story ever told and strengthen the global Christian community. It is with the deepest respect and greatest admiration to uh, dedicate this book to, to you. I can be on I'm Laura. I'm going to call you my friend and friend. It's a little bit tedious. That's the sense. Because I make sure, I will make sure that everyone reads it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>